Hey Calvary family, it's Pastor Chad again, and I wanted to update you on what Calvary is doing and share with you some encouraging thoughts during this crisis. Uh, as many of you know, things are changing rapidly, uh, even from just a few days ago. Uh, in the last 24 hours, Governor Ducey has uh, asked uh, that schools be closed statewide through March 27th, and uh, he's asked for gatherings of not more than 50 people to happen in one place. He, just this morning, President Trump reduced that number down to a handful and said, please refrain from social gatherings. So due to the uh, preventive measures to try and keep the coronavirus from spreading, Calvary is gonna be offering online only worship services this coming weekend. Uh, we're gonna have our normal services live at five on Saturday and eight, 9, 30, and 11 on Sunday. We're just gonna ask that you watch them at home at calvarylhc.com or calvaryaz.com or on the Calvary Facebook page. Uh, we're going to have announcements, we're going to have worship, we're going to have preaching, all of it, just like if you were here, but we're going to ask that you worship at home. And it'd be a great idea for you to gather your family together and worship together, or maybe grab some friends, maybe even some that don't go to church and, and bring them over and worship with you, or, or we gather as your life group and worship. But we want you to make a priority of connecting with God during this time of crisis and panic that is spreading. Uh, also, all of our on-campus activities are going to be canceled through March 27th. Whether those are studies, classes, um, student ministries, all of those things that were planned, even the IF conference for ladies has been postponed. So just we're, we're closing down. We're encouraging people to listen to the preventive measures being taken to try and mitigate this virus from spreading and putting people at risk. Now, some of you are asking, why are we really doing all this? Is it necessary? Isn't it an overreaction? Uh, you may feel that way, but I want to encourage you to think about this a little bit differently. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And, and Calvary, I want to encourage you to think about this and the things that we're doing as a way to love your neighbor. Uh, there's a lot of people who are at risk the elderly, those with compromised immune systems, and we want to think of them as the least of these and as our neighbors, and we want to protect them. So we're taking these measures as a community, as a church, to try to protect the weakest among us. That's an act of love. And, and, and to go beyond that, can I just encourage you to, to exhibit love in all of your life? Uh, it's not really loving to hoard supplies so that other people don't have enough. It's not really loving to think only of yourself and your family and, and just forget about everybody else. So can we really show love to our community in the name of Christ? Because we can't represent Jesus unless we reflect his character. And that means we need to love our neighbors as ourselves. So love your neighbor. Check in on your neighbor that's near you. Maybe you've got an elderly neighbor and um, maybe they're not able to get out and get supplies. See if they need something from the store that you can pick up for them. Uh, maybe bake cookies for your street and, and take some cookies to people and see if there's any prayer needs they have or any other needs they have. Or, or maybe just check in on your life group or the people that you know that uh, might be struggling. In fact, we want to help you do that. And, and so there's two things. If, if you're watching this and you're in need, whether it's food or, or someone to pick up your prescriptions from the pharmacy or just some help around the house, if you need some help, would you please contact Calvary? We would love to help you. On the other hand, if, if you're thinking, hey, I'm healthy and I can help some people and I've got some extra time now, would you also contact Calvary? And we'll try to pair you up with some people who could use someone to do some shopping for them or fix a meal for them or help them out in some way. Because we want to be that church that loves our neighbors and loves our community. You see, one of the things I know is going to happen is that God's going to redeem this brokenness right now. It's what he always does. We know that, that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And so even out of this crisis, which is going to pass eventually, we're going to have an opportunity to share the gospel with people who are far from God. So if we love really well, uh, people are going to invite a conversation that, you know, prior were never open to a conversation about God. People are going to make a life-changing commitment to follow Jesus who were never considering that before this. So look for those God-given opportunities with your neighbors, with your coworkers, with people that you're related to that are afraid and who are far from God. And let's use this moment to plant those seeds of hope 
In fact, while everyone's terrified of being infected by the coronavirus, let's be those people who infect others with hope in Jesus Christ. Because we don't have to be afraid. We know that God's in control and we know he's going to redeem this. But only that's only going to happen if we really love like Jesus. So uh, let's live differently. Let's love differently. Let's share what we have. And let's bless the people around us in Jesus' name.